All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's about 3.15 uh, in the afternoon central time. I hope that you are doing well. And I just wanted to get on here and encourage you from God's word and pray, pray together with you. Uh, I know most will watch this later. And, um, and, and if you have a prayer request, you can put it down uh, in the comment section. Uh, also, would love to hear where you're what to read, put it in the comment section where you're watching from, uh, in the states here, or other countries. Would love to see that. I want to encourage you today from Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30. It's a common scripture, but sometimes we need reminding, and really not sometimes, all the time we need reminding. And it's where Jesus said, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, I want to encourage you in this today in that Everything we do as a child of God, because of what Jesus has accomplished at the cross, and that is the yoke that he's referring to in Matthew chapter 11, when he said, take my yoke upon you, okay, a yoke was a device that they put upon two animals, then they still do that today, but especially in that day, two animals and two uh, cattle, actually, I should say, and, and they would pull but that yoke com uh, combined the strength of those two animals in order to do the work, the plowing. Okay, normally it was the plowing or the pulling. And, and get this, so it implied work. And so you and I as children of God, because of what Jesus has already done, uh, we do everything from a place of rest. The work has already been done. We are to take by faith, we're to take his work upon ourselves. That's what Jesus said. Take his work, his finished work, his victory upon ourself. And, and, and we do everything from that place of rest. And, and I, again, I want to encourage you today because this is so, so important. I, I, I think in the last several years, one of the things that's become so, uh, and if I'm looking off screen, I'm looking at the, the comments here, uh, something, something that, that has become so uh, clear to me is in my own life personally and also in the lives of other people is that, that we're living in a time of, of anxiety, of stress, of mental and spiritual, even physical warfare. And I don't want to say like maybe never before, but I know in the world of media, where we have so much bombarding our minds, and even not even outside of the media thing, we're living in the last of the last days where the spirit of the Antichrist is increasing more and more, and the spirit of the Antichrist is intended to wear the saints out. That's in Daniel chapter 7. That's what the Antichrist is going to do physically and spiritually when he is on this earth during the seven-year tribulation period. That's what he will do when he comes, okay? But the spirit of the Antichrist, which John said in 1 John chapter 2, which is already here, it's already working in the world, and it will that if that was working in John's day, how much more is the spirit of the Antichrist working in today's world? And so I bring that up because the spirit of the Antichrist is designed by Satan to wear the saints, the children of God, the body of Christ, the redeemed church, to wear us out, to wear us out in our mind. And ultimately, get this, ultimately it's intended to wear our faith out to wear our trust out, to weaken our faith. 
And I don't have to be a prophet. I believe in that because I believe in word, God's word. I believe in prophets. I believe in prophecies. I believe, it, but I, I don't claim to be that. But my point is this: I don't have to be a prophet to be able to look at you in the in this camera, all right, and read your mail in this way. In that, in the, especially in the last several years, that you have been experiencing at least to some degree, an increased level of spiritual warfare, an increased level of, of attack against you. Now, it may, have come, it, it may have come in different ways. Maybe it's through your family. Maybe it's through your work. Okay, maybe it's, maybe it's personal and it's personal issues and, and nobody else knows about it. Maybe it's something physical that happened to you. But I know this because I, I, I've experienced this and I've seen it so much, and especially again in the last several years, that, that God's people are being attacked in ways that, is, that the enemy is trying to wear God's people out. And I want to encourage you with this, that when you experience that, understand that that is a tactic of the enemy. And even, get this, even if the enemy is not involved, I believe most of the time he is, or many times I should say he is, but even if the enemy is not involved and you're experiencing just life, life will wear you out. But Jesus said here, he said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Where does true rest in the mind and the spirit and even the body, where does it come from? It comes from Jesus. Hallelujah. It comes from him. What does that mean? It means, again, as he said here, he said, take my yoke upon you. That's where we rest by, by faith. How do I do that? Someone asks, how do I take the yoke of Jesus upon me? How do I, upon yourself? How do I do that? It's just by simply believing, simply trusting that the work has already been done. Trust in the finished work of Jesus for you. That's the victory. That's where the rest comes from. And the opposite of rest, rest is stress. And, and, and I'm not trying to be a, have a play on words there it just happens to be that that the opposite of of rest is stress and i can tell you this the lord does not want you to be stressed and to be worn out mentally uh spiritually physically no he'll give you wisdom this is what the lord will do now ultimately we are to rest in his finished work on our behalf. And again, how do we do that? It's just simply trusting in him. And instead of taking upon ourselves stress, because you know what stress and worry is? is? Stress is bringing tomorrow's problems into today. Stress is putting the responsibility, even of our own well-being, upon our own shoulders, as if we are the, as if we are the great physician, as if we are Jehovah Jireh. I don't have, I don't have to, I don't have to tell you. You know this, but I'll remind you: we are not Jehovah Jireh. We are not. God the provider. We are not God our healer. No, there's only one, and that's God our Father and His Son Jesus Christ and His Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So I just want to encourage you today that do everything you do from a place of rest. In, o in order to take His rest and His work upon us, it means that we're going to have to lay some things down because you can't wear two yokes at the same time. You can't wear your own yoke or I'm going to figure it out. I'm, I'm the master of my own destiny. Okay. I'm, I'm going to, no, I'm going to, no, we can't wear two yokes at the same time. Take your yoke off. Okay. And that's by just rejecting it. 
That's what it is. It's just simply we reject, we deny ourselves, as Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. We deny, it's, get this, our own yoke, us being playing the role of God, it ought to be repulsive to us. And I know those words will never come out of our mouth. Most likely, those words will never come out of our mouth. I'm going to play the role of God. No, those words will never be there. But we live like it. We think like it. And today, the Lord wants you to know through this video, whether you're watching it now or whether you're watching this later, the Lord wants you to know it's time to just lay aside your yoke and take on the yoke of Jesus. And don't take it off. Keep it on. And every time that whatever that is comes against you, and I get this, I understand. I, I think I've gone through things in the last several years. I believe this strongly. The Lord has allowed me to go through things in my own life to give me greater compassion for those who are going through things mentally, spiritually, physically, in every way, financially. And the Lord will allow us, you, to go through things, to give you a greater compassion for those so that when we see people who are going through things, we don't have some high and mighty, you know, who, you know come on, you know, kind of attitude. No, but we have an attitude of compassion. And... Today, the Lord just wants you to just simply rest in Him. And how do, how do we do that again? How, how, how? Because how do we rest? It's, it's by simply trusting in Him. This is what I was getting at earlier. Sometimes those things to just keep on coming back over and over and over again. It can, it can be anything. It can be the thoughts of doubt. It can be the thoughts of fear. It can be the, it can be the thoughts of self-righteousness. And you realize it's self-righteousness. It's pride. And it just keeps on coming back. Get this, our own flesh doesn't play games, and the enemy, Satan, does not play games. The spirits that are in, in, in this world, they do not play games. They're looking for keeps. They're playing for keeps to wear you out so that your faith will be weakened. But I believe very strongly the Lord just wants me to remind you just simply rest in Him. And those things can keep on coming back over and over and over again. And when they keep coming back, keep on resting. Keep on resting. And here, here's some sort of, is an important thing before I pray. That, you know, when those things keep on coming back, when those thoughts keep on coming back, when that, maybe that situation in your family, it just happens again. <laughs> I'm laughing because uh, sometimes I think we just add, to, add some humor to life. But you know what I'm talking about. That thing in your family, it just happens again. Or in your own life. Oh, here it is again. Again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And maybe it stops for a few. But then it comes back and it's like, oh, oh, again. Maybe it's your work. Maybe it's someone at work. Maybe it's yourself. How do you react and it's, oh, here it is. Here we go. Here we go again. When you experience that and you feel, you sense that in your own spirit, here's what we need to do. We need to recognize that that stress and that, that fear, that wearing you out kind of thing that's going on, that it didn't come from God reject it as a lie because that's what it is it's a lie it doesn't bring peace that oh here it is here we go again no, 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 no. And, you, and you start entertaining all the the chatter okay and you start entertaining the drama don't entertain the drama that's in your mind or in other people's lives don't entertain it got enough drama don't entertain the drama just recognize it as a lie because it doesn't bring you peace. Let it be repulsive to you, but at the same time have compassion and the love of God in your spirit towards people. Don't be repulsive to people. Don't let people be repulsive in the sense that you just uh, that you that you you want just condemn them and just ah 
forget them. No, we're, we're, to be con, we're to be compassionate and loving and sensitive. At the same time, be repulsed by the attitude and the spirit that doesn't bring peace. And we can do that in a compassionate and loving way. And so I want to encourage you today with that rest, 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 rest. We do everything from a place of rest. The victory has already been won. The provision for your peace, it's already there. And as Paul would write in, in Philippians chapter 4, oh, it's so important, Philippians chapter 4, uh, verses 4 and 5 and 6, where he said uh, these words, he said, be anxious for nothing. Get that. Be anxious, let me find it real quick here, I'm giving you the right reference. Philippians chapter 4, and uh, yeah, verses 4 through 7, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Praise, instead of stressing out, praise God. Hallelujah. He said, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. Oh, hear this right now. This is God's word to you right now. I believe this. Be anxious. Don't be stressed about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Oh, that's powerful. Lord, it, what does that mean? I, I say this in a very practical sense because when Paul, what Paul said there, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your petitions be made or your requests be made known to God. God wants to hear your requests, but he wants to hear it this way. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I need you. Jesus, I thank you. Oh, I need you, Jesus. Mix your requests with thanksgiving. And he said this, And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. I wasn't even planning on reading this scripture. But as you can see here, I've got this awesome t-shirt I got in Israel just a little over a month ago, I got back from Israel just a week before this recent war started, and I got this t-shirt in Jerusalem, Israeli Defense Forces, IDF. You probably heard, if you've watched the news, you probably heard about them. Uh, and they have the Iron Dome system that I've seen it personally in action in 2014 in particular. Uh, uh, a rocket from Hamas, from a Hamas rocket from Gaza launched into Israel, and it was intercepted, this is in 2014, it was intercepted by the Iron Dome system right above our, the, our heads, of the group that I was with, right above our head. I heard the sound, the whistling, that, 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 um, uh, it, it, that whistling sound, that sound of a rocket, and all of a sudden, boom, right up in the sky, the Iron Dome system intercepted it right above us, now, it was way up in the sky, but it was right above us. I've seen it in action. I'm bringing that up to say, well, we didn't pay for Israel, but this is what the Lord said. He said that the peace of God will guard your heart. That's where faith comes from, and your mind. That's your thought life. The peace of God will put a guard, an iron dome system on your thought life and on your faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get this, you have a spiritual iron dome system over you because of Jesus and because of what he's done. It's called the peace of God. And when we give everything to him, be anxious for nothing. Let it be repulsive to us. Every thought of anxiousness and anxiety, it's a lie. Let it be repulsive to you. That's a part of denying ourselves. And I understand that people can have health problems, and, and so I, I get that. And sometimes are, I get that. And sometimes there, there's, there's, it's nothing wrong with wisdom. It's, it's the wisdom of God at times to see a doctor about you know physical ailments. But we, we, and there's nothing wrong with that. Please don't, don't take me the wrong way. No, but at the same time, what we, every single one of us can do is we can do what Paul said. 
the Holy Spirit through him, is rest and bring everything to him. And let those thoughts be repulsive to us and embrace the yoke of Jesus, the work of Jesus. That's how we rest. We just simply trust in him. And I think of it this way sometimes. It's just like, sometimes I got to tell myself, okay, just chill, just chill and rest. Rest in Christ. Got, he's got me covered. He's my iron dome system. You got an iron dome system over you. It's called the peace of God. Again, because of the blood of Jesus, you've got an iron dome system. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, that gets me happy. Praise God. And so uh, if you have a prayer request, you can write it down there. And uh, praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. And we're going to pray for um, we're going to pray for Israel. And uh, you can see that I uh, this is not official. OK, this IDF T-shirt. This is I, I bought this in the streets of Jerusalem uh, when I was there in September. Uh, and so um, but we want to pray for Israel. And this thought came to my mind early or yesterday that, you know, right now, do you realize that right now? that Israel and the Jewish people, Israel as a nation, the Jewish people as a people group, that they probably have more people praying for them. I mean, believers now. I'm not just talking about people, oh, I'm praying for you, you know, my thoughts are with you. No, my, no, I got more than thoughts with you. I got the prayers of the righteous with you, Israel. And, and I believe that right now, in the time that we're living, there's more prayers of the righteous being made for Israel as a nation and the Jews as a people group than ever before in human history. I believe that because of the number of the population on this earth and the number of believers on this planet. I believe that there's more true people, believers, praying for Israel than ever before, and I'm talking about in one in one time, praying for Israel than ever before in history. And we need to keep on praying for Israel and ultimately pray for their blessing, pray for their safety, and ultimately pray that their eyes be open to Jesus, their Messiah. And so, because he's not just, he's their Messiah, he's the, but he's their Messiah. He came from the Jews. That's why, we, that's why we pray for Israel, because the Messiah, Jesus, the Savior, okay, he came from the Jewish people. That's, the, that's how God ordained it, okay? And he created Israel for that purpose. Israel didn't exist, and then God chose them. No, he called on a man named Abraham and brought a nation from Abraham, and from that nation... He told Abraham this in Genesis 12, in Genesis 15, Genesis 18, Genesis 22, Genesis 24, so on and so forth, that, and many other scriptures, that God chose Israel, that through Israel, through Abraham, and through that nation, the seed would come, and that seed is the Savior, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And so that's why we pray for Israel. Because they're a blessed nation. They're a chosen nation. And according to Romans chapter 9, 10, 11 and Old Testament prophecies, God still has a plan for his people, Israel. They're his people. It's his land in Israel. And one day, they're going to they're gonna realize that Jesus Christ truly is the Messiah. They don't as a people group now, but one day they will. And so we need to pray for them. So I'm going to pray today. I'm going to pray for physical requests. I'm just, I'm going to pray for spiritual. I'm just, I'm just going to say one prayer. I believe as a whole, I'm going to, I'm going to pray together. And I, I just ask that you would agree with me together in prayer and that, that strongholds are broken, that healing virtue, the healing virtue of God flows, that, that financial blessing takes place. Uh, we'll pray for Israel, pray for this country, the leadership in this country. Pray for a, a move of God in this country. We can pray for the body of Christ. Pray for other other needs that are that, and and spiritual uh, I should, uh, revelation knowledge in our own heart that we would know Him more, that we would have a closer walk with Him. 
We need a close walk with Jesus in these last days. It's not time to be apathetic. It's time to have a close walk with Jesus. Now's the time for that, not tomorrow, now. So let's pray together. Father, we just come before you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you are faithful. Lord, we call out to you right now. And we thank you, Lord, that you hear our cry. Lord, we, you hear the cry of the righteous. And we just give you glory and honor and praise, Lord. And Father, right now we lift up the people of Israel. God, the nation, Lord, we lift them up. The soldiers that are fighting, Lord, the generals, all the in the military, Lord, uh, the, the prime minister, God, we ask you, God, that you would touch them, the leaders in Israel, that you would touch them, protect them, bless Israel, bless Jerusalem, Lord, and we ask more than anything that they would know you, Jesus, that their eyes would be opened, the scales of unbelief would be taken off. I pray, Lord, that you would let the hostages would be released. Lord, we lift up that situation in Gaza, and we pray for confusion upon Hamas, every evil worker that hates Israel and hates you, O God, hates the God of the Jews. We take authority in the name of Jesus over that spirit. And Father, we ask that that would be defeated, O Lord, in that area. Lord, let it be defeated in the name of Jesus. Let it be exposed. We pray for confusion upon them and that they would release the hostages, O Lord, that they would lay down their arms in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would divinely intervene for your people. In Jesus' name. Father, we lift up, Lord, the physical needs of those that are watching right now. Lord, whether it's the mind, the physical, the, the, the spiritual. God, I pray for every need right now of the spirit, uh, heart, the spirit, soul, and body right now. In Jesus' name. I pray for your healing power. Lord, those that are watching, we agree together right now, believing that by your stripes we are healed. Lord, let there be healing of the mind, of the spirit, the heart. Lord, of the body, from head to toe, let there be healing of kidneys. Let there be healing of the liver. Let there be healing of skin disease and other other disorders of the body lord uh, uh the nervous system that's on fire lord let that nervous system calm down and be normalized in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray for restoration of health for those who've been going through it. I pray for healing and restoration, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we look to you for by your stripes we are healed. I pray, God, for rest. Lord, help us to rest in you, to simply trust in you, to lay down, to, re to let, Lord, let the lies of stress, let them be repulsive to us in the name of Jesus. And I pray, God, for strength, spirit, soul, and body, Lord, and strength in the mind, Lord, of those that are watching now or later, in Jesus' name, let your strength come, let your joy come, give a fresh baptism of joy in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Let there be a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit and fire in Jesus' name. Lord, burn off all the chaff in our life. Burn off the fear. Lord, burn off the anxiety. Burn off, Lord, the pride and the self-righteousness, Lord. Burn it off in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I lift up the the other needs, Lord, that are that are represented by those that are watching, Lord. The, 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 every need, Lord, spirit, soul, and body, I lift up the financial needs. Lord, I pray that you would bless your people financially in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless, let it come from the east, the west, the north, and the south. Lord, I pray for business opportunities, Lord. I pray for open doors. I pray that you would bless your people, that your work would be blessed in the name of Jesus. Lord, those that are business owners, those that are on retirement, Lord, I pray that you would help and strengthen, Lord. Let, Lord, I pray that you would make a way where there seems to be no way in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. It's not your will for your people to be stressed. Lord, I pray for 
deliverance in that area in the name of Jesus. Stressed about money, stressed about our, our physical body, stressed about our family. It's not your will, Lord. We receive your rest right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we lift up this nation. We lift up, uh, har- we ask you, Lord, for a harvest of souls in this nation in the name of Jesus. We pray for our leadership, for wisdom. Lord, at every level from the White House to the local mayors and council people, Lord, we ask that you would touch them in the name of Jesus. Lord, let them cry out to you. Let them see the craziness in this world and let them turn to you, Jesus. And I pray that, Lord, they would stand with Israel in Jesus' name and come against this spirit of the Antichrist that's in this country and in this world in Jesus' name. Lord, let them look to you. Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Nothing's impossible with you. And Father, we lift up, Lord, the body of Christ in this country and all around the world. We pray that we would all that we would return to our first love. We pray that, Lord, we would look to you, Jesus. Look to the cross like never before. That we would look to your word, O oh Lord. That our faith would be anchored in your word and not in the words of men, but in your word, O oh Lord. Let our faith be anchored in you, O oh God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, for we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are our firm foundation. And you, Jesus, you said upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We thank you, Lord, that you've won the victory. Oh, thank you, Lord. You've won the victory. And we cry out to you. We praise you, O oh God. Hallelujah for the victory. Hallelujah for the victory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for the victory. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that there would be a shout of joy that would just rise up from the hearts of your people, O oh God. Because your word says, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Thank you, Lord. Lord, touch your people in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And we say it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Hallelujah. There is a shout of victory in God's people. You know why? It's because we have the Holy Spirit. We've got Jesus, the victor, living on the inside of us. And he's not some... He's not some weak, you know, passive, just uh, whatever. He's No, no, he's not that kind of warrior. He's not that kind of savior. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost will stir up in you a shout of hallelujah, a shout of glory, a shout of Jesus, I thank you. He'll do that. And sometimes we need that mentally to just let it out in the name of Jesus because the enemy's a liar and he's defeated and you've been walking too low. You've been living too low. It's time to live higher. It's time to go higher in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And we do everything, as I said from the very beginning, we do everything from a place of, of rest, resting in Jesus, take his yoke upon us. He said, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop there today, but I would love to, again, hear where you're watching from. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the Cornell Ministries YouTube channel. I know it's on Facebook right now, but it will go on YouTube. And uh, even if you're on Facebook right now, so if you haven't already, again, subscribe to the Cornell Ministries YouTube channel. And, um, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not shy to say that. I say that for the glory of God. Uh, praise the Lord. The Lord is faithful. The Lord is faithful. If you feel led to help us financially, I, we need it as well. We need that as well. And so you can go to the CornellMinistries.com. You can see it there on the screen. You can... You can set up a recurring gift if you want to. And I challenge you, those that are watching right now, those now watching later, I challenge you to give a recurring gift. If it's $25 a month, 
or whatever the amount the Lord lays upon your heart, I encourage you to do so. This is a work. I know this. I know this. And I, I, I've, I've never done this before for Cornell Ministries. I've done this for other ministries, but I've never done this for this ministry. I challenge you to support this, this ministry. And I, I've, never done, I've never done this before. Go to cornellministries.com. Not in this way. Again, I've done, like I've said, I've done this for other ministries, but I've never done this for this ministry. I challenge you to give a recurring gift. You can go to cornellministries.com. You see it on there. You have to, if you have never given before, you just put in your information, and then, then after that, it's just easy, very easy. It's safe, secure, and but we need it. We do. We need it. And so uh, I, I thank you for that. Praise the Lord. And, and, and hear me, I don't plan on doing this very, I, I, that's, the, I, that's the first time I've ever done it in that way, but I sense the Holy Spirit moving upon my heart to do so. And the w- nice thing about the website right there, cornerministry.com, where you can text to give, is that uh, you can do that anywhere around the world. And so, uh, but God bless you. I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't, I don't even like, I, I, anyway, but God bless you. Again, keep uh, those that are watch this later. You can see the prayer. If you see prayer requests, pray for them. Pray for each other. And again, like I said earlier, rest in Christ. And it's time to draw close to the Lord. It's time to draw near to Him. Praise God. And so God bless you. He loves you, and I mean that. He loves you. He loves you. He does. He loves you. You're not alone. He loves you. I want to say it again. He loves you. You're not alone. Praise God. And so we're going to sign out, but God bless you, and have a wonderful day in Jesus.